I'm going to be hosting the live broadcast this evening. You guys are going to be live on television across the world. So we need you to be loud. Can you be loud? This is a good start. But now I need everybody to follow suit. Sasfei, can you be loud? Okay, we need to hire some people. You guys are pretty, pretty quiet. Let's try one more time. Sasfei, make some noise. Let's hear it. There we go. Much better. So before we go live, we're going to be on the broadcast. We're going to be doing a donation for Climbers Against Cancer. I'll explain about that in a few moments. So pay attention. You guys are going to see a great climber by the way. It's going to be super exciting.
before we get going with the action, let's take a look at this video from Climbers Against Cancer, a charity very close to all of our hearts. Maria Felix Vass on BBC Radio Lancashire. A very good morning to you. Welcome to Lunchtime Favourites this Saturday coming from Dutton. I'm going to be chatting to John Ellison this afternoon and finding out what his favourite tunes are. John, you're a climber and you've got a special cause at the moment. So do you want to just briefly tell us about what you do? Yeah, that's the machine that the CAC t-shirts are produced on. It makes all the t-shirts. What do you think? Mm. So you've got one with blue on and one with orange. Yeah. Two nice colours as well. All right, Kelly, that's it coming your way. Yes. And it's really nice when you yeah. read the addresses, you know, like so Norway, Sweden, you know, America, Singapore. It's, it's like really rewarding when you see where you're going. Right, well, basically, I'm um, through my links with climbing internationally. Um, I de decided to start up um, a charity called Climbers Against Cancer, which basically we're raising money for research facilities around the world. Um, and the idea is also to raise awareness, given that there's such a, um, a fear factor involved with cancer. Um, so I've, I've sort of seen a massive change just in the month since we set up the website. Um, a lot of people are actually talking about cancer, kids are talking about it, they're all wearing the Climbers Against Cancer t-shirts and hopefully I'm making a difference. So that of course was John Ellison, a very close personal friend of mine and also Rob Ade, who is the new event coordinator at the UIAA. Tonight we have a very special donation to make, let me get the numbers right, we have a cheque for £25,000 or 33,500 Swiss francs to be made to the Swiss Research Foundation Against Cancer. Santino Monteleone is here to accept that cheque and Fritz Vreiland, the president of the UIAA, is going to present it to him. Ladies and gentlemen of SASFE, a big round of applause. It's your donations that go towards making these donations possible. You can buy t-shirts online at climbersagainstcancer.org but over £250,000 of donations have been made to cancer charities worldwide. And this is the first donation in Switzerland, which is a country very close to John's heart, especially considering that his cousin lives here. Santino, you'd like to say a few words? I will thank you very much to John and all the people around here who are not staying at home. Just go out, say a, something about cancer because of some foundations like this we can fight the cancer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Fritz, for presenting the check. Thank you, Santino, and thank you, Rob. If you can support Climbers Against Cancer, then do. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get ready with the action. But before we do that, earlier today was the semi-finals. The men and the women both competed, and I have to say it was possibly the best semi-final I have ever seen. Let's take a quick look at some of the action.
So, a couple of little technical issues there, but we got those fixed straight away. Thank you for your patience, and thank you to our wonderful technical team. You do a great job of fixing those problems as they happen. On the screen in front of you is Ekaterina Vlasova. She qualified in eighth place for the semi-finals today. We're seeing these moves for the first time, seeing the route for the first time. We're very excited to see it. If you are just tuning in, welcome to the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. It's the first final of the season here in Sazfe. Ema, are you excited? Tell me again, are you excited? I'm very excited, Liam. <laughs> Excellent, me too. If you are tuning in, let us know where you are watching from. Stick a message in the comments box or in the chat box. Tell us what town you're watching in and who you are cheering for. Katarina Vlasova wasting no time as she gets off to the first start with seven minutes and nine seconds on the clock. The route times much longer during the finals because they go that full height of the structure. Ema, while Katarina's making these early moves, tell us a little bit about how your competition went. Well, um, my competition unfortunately didn't go as well as I would have liked, um, but that's the way competitions go sometimes. Um, I think I haven't really had a good track record in Sasfe, and I um, sometimes, I guess maybe I'm a little bit nervous here, and I qualification, I didn't make it through to the semi-finals, um, Maybe I climbed a little bit slowly, a little bit nervous, I'm not sure, but um, I, I think I've learned something, you know, um, Sasfe is a tricky structure and um, there's the holes are quite difficult and, you know, you want to be careful and then you want to climb fast enough, so anyway, that's competition. It is indeed. And it's great to have you here, of course, I'd much rather you were out there climbing, but it's great to have you here anyway. Um, so Ekaterina Vlasova is looking super solid in these early moves, moving through the ice barrel onto the log in the direction that we saw the male competitors on the semi-finals route today. Ema, that move in the male semi-final, I think we're going to be talking about that for the rest of the season. Totally wild. It really was. Um, I think um, the root setters did a really great job. It was um, it's a, a new move. I'd never seen anything like it before. Um, Certainly not in ice climbing. Definitely not. 
Um, so the competitors did a great job and it was interesting to see how different people tackle the problem and some people dynoed for it and some people tried to move balance and uh, move across so yeah it was great to watch so cool yeah. absolutely stunning okay so Vlasova now bridging off the log and onto the right hand side into the ply to the first section of that head wall you can see how close the fans are here in Sazbe they are literally within touching distance watch out there are some sharp objects knocking about guys Vlasova just looking to make that clip. A little bit of drag in the system already. Just taking a moment to shake. Places her feet. Good kicks. Makes the next move towards clip number 10. Ima, you've been in finals. What's going to be going through Ekaterina Vlasova's head at this stage? Well, I think at this stage, um, she's been through qualification, semi-finals, and normally when it comes to finals, you just want to go for it. Um, and you know everybody else in finals, that everybody wants to win and probably feels a bit more relaxed. Um, she's definitely climbing really smoothly. Um, and you know she's such a strong competitor. She's making these moves look really easy, but they are definitely not easy. Um, so she just wants to you know, keep going, get as high as she can. Everybody wants to top out and um, yeah, and not make a mistake. Oh, like oh, that! That was a mistake! No. Oh, no! Heartbreak for Vlasova. Wasn't expecting that, and don't think she was either. Looked like, well, I mean, we'll get to see the replay in a second, but it looked like the pick popped off one of those really poor holes. Yeah, she wasn't even into the meat of the route there. That's such a shame for Ekaterina Vlasova. It's pretty heartbreaking. Um, she looked really solid. She wasn't, she wasn't looking tired. But uh, you know what happens, that you're trying to climb as quickly as possible and, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out, unfortunately. What a shame there for Ekaterina Vlasova. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Sazfe in Switzerland. Thanks for tuning in and thanks for dropping in those comments. Tom Carr has tuned in. This is, of course, Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined this evening by Ema McSwiggan of Ireland. We have got a spectacular final lined up for you. Nine men, nine women. Sorry, that's a lie. It's a total lie. There's eight men and eight women <laughs> that are going to be going through. Katarina Vlasova just fell there on her attempt at that finals route, our first athlete of the evening. Let's take a look on the replay to see what that looked like. can see Vlasova there just looking back up the line trying to work out what went wrong so hard you know it's 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 I'm heartbroken for her she's such a nice girl and she's such a great competitor she's she's always you know she always makes finals and you just want everyone to do well and um, yeah I guess she just she's trying to process what happened and well from one Russian to another, and this time it's Alexei Tomilov. We're going to alternate between men and women this evening. He qualified in eighth place after a stunning performance in the semi finals. Yeah, Alexei is no stranger to finals, so, and Sasfe as well. He's, um, he plays second here last year. Yeah, he's, he's always up there, um, and he's. He's incredibly strong, you know, technically he's very strong. Um, he moves quickly. He's definitely one to watch. He got to that dyno in the semi-finals route and then, as I said later, as I said earlier rather, good with my tenses, uh, he fluffed it. He didn't quite commit to the dyno enough and it meant that he, yeah, he was out of there. But it was still enough to get him into the finals. Nine minutes for this men's route. It's a behemoth, it's a leviathan, it's a marathon. It's a long way, is what I'm trying to say. Alexei Tomilov using his left hand on that hold for the first set of moves, and he's moving on to those Sam holds. Holds taken from the river, river-worn granite, about the most polished, frictionless substance known to man. 
That's maybe a slight exaggeration, but <laughs> they're pretty grim, aren't they? they? They are pretty grim, but looking at Alexi Climb here, he's not. he doesn't seem to be very scared of them, and he's moving very smoothly. If you are enjoying the broadcast, then feel free to like and share it using Facebook or YouTube. Maybe somebody that you know would like to watch it too. Great effort with that undercut. A lot of tension there on that left hand as he reaches across with the right. Looking very solid to begin there, Alexei Tomimov. Root observation, of course, happened earlier. The athletes get a series of minutes to take a look at the holds, to make some notes. They're only allowed to use a pen and paper and a pair of binoculars. No other means of looking or observing those holds. Great Stein there from Alexei Tomilov. Stein pull when the pick of the axe is in on a hold and the head of the axe, as you can see there, presses against the wall to get extra torque. Almost like a rest, it's that good. And he reaches out with the right hand into the underside of that log. Oh, cuts loose on one foot and tried to kick in first time. Manages to catch it second time. That was impressive stuff there. Good recovery from Alexei Ema. Certainly was. Um, he, you know, that's the difference, I think, in these top athletes that when something does go wrong, they make a small slip, they're, they're very capable of recovering. And um, Alexei just showed us there exactly what he's made of. So. He, he looked very unfazed by that. He just got the axe straight in his teeth, threw his hand up and did the pull up. Yeah. And just kept moving on to the next. So now he's clipping up, he's clipping down rather, he's doing a traverse section. You can see the orange paint on that log means that he has to climb downwards onto this ice barrel and rightwards. They've set a very we weaving, winding route. Oh, that's a mouthful. <laughs> so actually the structure is SAS Bay, um, they've done a lot of work to it. So this year the routes are very different. Um, and so this particular traverse down is it's, it's new so it's new for all the competitors really cool great to see different stylists setting there are new route setters here so another clip down hopefully that won't put put too much drag in the system yeah he's just taking a rest here before he moves on to the Another foot pop yeah. there, out of that volume. Five minutes, 40 seconds to go. Only at clip eight. Yeah, this is a really long route if you look how far he's come already. Um, but he, he has to keep moving if he wants to get to the top. It's quite a long move. Big swing with that right arm, misses it first time. Yeah. There it is. Looking very composed at the moment. Alexei Tomilov is the first male athlete that we've seen this evening. First time we've seen these moves climbed. There's clip number eight for Alexei Tomilov of Russia. His brother Maxim qualified in first place with a stunning performance in the semi-finals for him. Just matching his tools here, thinking before he moves on. So this next tool doesn't really look that appealing. <laughs> Why'd you say that? Well, it's just a very um, smooth edge on it, as you can uh -huh. see. Feels insecure, I assume. Yeah, but like um, he's used a kind of a backhand grip on it, and um, seems to be working. It does. Reaches up, makes clip number nine. He's on those ice barrels now. He's got two ice barrels to traverse and three clips in the process. So it's quite interesting when, whenever you get onto the ice barrels, you kind of be, you'd be happy because the holes are big, but then um, it's it's quite powerful then and um, you have to hold on you have to 
Um, as you can see there, he's just hanging off the two ice tools. And it was the ice barrels that caused a lot of problems for the ladies in the qualifiers, Ema. What was well, your take on that? It was actually <laughs> the ice barrels in the route pre preview. Um, it looked quite straightforward, but when you got there, the ice barrel was turning and um, you were trying to move up on it, then it was it was shifting you further away from the hold you were trying to get to. So um, it's a kind of technical move. So it's, yeah, they're not easy. Um, Alexia Tomilov moving up the speed wall now. Those blocks of ice were where the speed final was held yesterday using some of the drilled holes and, and holds from the race. He's just checking <coughs> for his time there. Two minutes and 40 seconds, Alexei. Not that he can hear me. <laughs> That's clip number 13 for him. And you can see he's got a ways to go yet. <coughs> Come on, Alexei. Just puts a heel in the back of that ice wall there. Trying to get a bit of respite. Makes clip number 14. Still with two minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Emma Powell, great to have you on board. Hopefully see you at some competitions this year. Into the fig four on number 14. Reaches back to the ice barrel, straight into the fig nine. Flawless movement. Very smooth indeed. Reaches high into the ice barrel. Clip 15 is beckoning. Come on, Alexei Tomilov, keep up the momentum now. One minute, 45 seconds to go. He is setting the standard for the rest of the guys this evening. I have to say, Ema, either Alexei's making it look very easy or there hasn't been anything too troubling in the route yet. Well, you know, um, he's such a good climber. Um, the the moves, a lot of the moves are really difficult, but he's, he's looking in great condition. Um, he's definitely got to be tired at this stage and I think now he's just he just has to keep going and this is when um, your mental strength comes into play and you just have to push on. Yeah, he's definitely feeling um, pumping his arms there. So come on, Alexi, keep it moving as he moves over to the left hand side of that EP volume. You can see the whole bit. Oh, he slips, manages to hold it. He's got a good stick there on that right hand side in the ice barrel. The crowd watching on with bated breath right next to him. 50 seconds remaining for Tomilov. Oh, he missed oh. it again. There we, he's missed it. Come on, Alexei. There we go. Doesn't miss it four times in a row. Kicks in hard. The crowd are getting behind him now. 40 seconds remaining. Up to another one of those disgusting Sam holds. There is no friction on those things. Come on, Alexei Tomilov. You must be tired. Oh, oh and that's it. Just waning. Still with more climbing to go. Finishes at between clip 16 and 17. That's a great work there from Alexei Tomilov. Ema, what do you make of that? Yeah, he, he did a great job. He really, you know, he kept composed the whole way through. He um, he was tired at the top, but he kept moving. You know, he kept the last 30 seconds. He was, you know, trying to get the next hold and yeah. Certainly can't be disappointed with that performance. Definitely not. No, that was, um, that was really good. Almost mistakeless, flawless performance. There we see the replay. Alexi moving so confidently on those very, very poor holds. Crowd getting a close look at what's going down. This move, he recovered so well. His right really tool good. just didn't quite, uh, sorry, his right crampon didn't quite get the distance to kick in. What do you guys at home think of Alexi's performance? Do you think he's doing enough to make a podium position? Why not drop us a comment or a message in the chat box on YouTube and Facebook? You can also get in touch with me directly on Instagram using at Liam Lonsdale. Big swing. Oh, he was like, he must be so tired even by that point. He's not even halfway. Well, it's such an impressive start to the men's final. Um, it'll be, be interesting to see how everyone else does on this route. And here is our second female competitor, and it is Zina Gertz, 18-year-old Swiss climber. Did an amazing job to make the finals here today. Climbed so well in that semi-finals. She didn't think she'd do enough to make it through, but she tied in fifth place. 
and here she is now. She finished 17th here last year, so she's already absolutely smashed it out of the park. And I do believe this is her first ever senior final. Yeah, she's um, even seeing her compared to how she was climbing last year, she's improved so much and she looks just more comfortable um, on the wall and she looks more confident and, um, you know, I do think she's definitely one to watch for the future. She's actually Swiss champion at this moment in time. One thing that we'll be able to see at some point during the broadcast, keep our eyes on it, is the hot seat. It's a new thing that we've added this season. The current first place of the competition will sit in the hot seat. Okay. And we'll know who's in first place the whole time. All right. And as soon as they get pushed down the place, the new first place will kick them out of the seat and they get to sit there. Okay. So That's Alexei Tobolov could be sat in that top hot seat for the whole day. <laughs> He could be there the whole time if nobody beats him. It's an interesting concept. Yeah, <laughs> it comes from the ski tour. So in skiing and the downhill ski racing, when uh, the guy who places first or the lady that places first gets there, they get to sit in the hot seat until someone beats him. Okay. So it's cool. Yeah. Cena Gertz at this moment in time, just moving tentatively cautiously nothing too aggressive kicking in hard into that right hand side as she moves her body weight below that stone hold the red area, the out of bound zone. We've got people tuning in from all over the world. Wherever you tuned in from, why not drop us a comment in the chat box or in the comment box on Facebook and YouTube. Let us know who you're cheering for and where you are cheering from. Hope you've had a good Saturday so far. Needs to pick up the pace now, I think, Yima. Yeah, well, she's just taking a bit of a rest there before she gets onto the ice barrel, which I think is a very smart move. Um, once you get onto those barrels, um, you can get pumped pretty quickly. And, um, you know, she's she's already climbed quite a bit, and she's um, there have been a lot of tricky stone holes, so she has to, you know, she's still a bit to go. and. You kind of have to pace yourself. Mm -hmm. um, although you, speed is important, you know, if you get pumped, that's it. It's kind of came over. So. Well, at the moment, she's moving very well around the ice barrel. She is. So I think this next move up onto the wood is a, quite a tricky move because it's it's quite high. So. so to generate enough force behind the pick from that low point. Yeah, it's it's not simple. Well, let's see if Cena's got what it takes. Come on, Cena. Cena's twin brother, Lucas, will be the next climber in the men's competition. Great to see two Swiss athletes in the finals. Very talented family. Very talented family. And I believe their dad is one of the top mountain guides in Switzerland as well. There you go. It's in the blood. <laughs> Come on, Cena. Come on, Zena. Oh, oh no, heartbreak. That's not the finish that she wanted. It's not, but you know, she, she climbed well. She made the first ever senior final of her career. It's She's quite, broken the ice now, you know, pardon it, the pun. It's <laughs> quite daunting to go out there, especially in front of this crowd. If we, if we look out and see everyone, like um, the, stadium here is completely packed and it can be I'm sure quite intimidating to go out although you know she's it's her first final so she's nothing to lose and it's very exciting but yeah she did she did a good job you know it's I think it's easy to watch and you know look at the speed of the climbers and um, but it's really hard and I know those routes are the holes are tricky and even when you're doing your route preview, 
you can't really see. You kind of have an idea, but until you get there, mm -hmm. sometimes like the hold could be, it could be in a different spot, and you do have to take the time to check it out. So, well, it was a great work, a great work, a great <laughs> effort there from Cena in her first ever senior final here in Sazfe. This is where she came a cropper, just pumping out on the ice barrel. Yeah, she kept going, you she know. She did keep to going. The end. She's definitely one to watch for the future. And there is her brother, Lucas Gertz. Oh, and um, hi to Terry, uh, watching from Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona. Arizona. But it's a little bit warmer there than it is here. I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Lucas, twin brother of Cena. Let's see if he can better his sister's effort. I wonder if there's any brother-sister rivalry. You know, I don't think so. They seem <laughs> to get on really well. Yeah, they seem pretty chill. They're so lovely. They're very supportive of each other, so... You know, I guess they train together, so they probably it, it probably works really well if there is a bit of rivalry between them. Friendly rivalry. Pr yeah, of course. Sibling rivalry. Yeah. Do you think the parents say whoever gets highest gets more love? <laughs> <laughs> I love you more because you got a medal. Oh, I don't think it would be quite that way. <laughs> no, perhaps not. Okay, so here we go. Going up to clip number one. The first three are pre-clipped in this competition. We can see on the top left of the screen the time elapsed. Lucas Gertz is 17 seconds behind Alexei Tomilov. So what we can tell by that is the progress of the athletes as they go doesn't mean anything obviously the score is what's what counts but it just gives us a nice reference for how the athletes are doing as we go so 18 seconds slowing down a little bit behind Alexei Tomilov we've got people tuning in from Indonesia we've got people from all over great to have everybody on board if you have a question or a shout out then stick it in the comments in the chat we'll do our best to cover those Ale Lucas Lucas Gertz there of Switzerland. Eighteen years old. And he's picking up some pace. He's only ten seconds behind Tommy Loft now. Puts the Stein in next to it, clip number three. I think that's the thing about um, the Swiss team. They have a they have a lot of strong young climbers. So it's there's a strong future for the sport. Well, let's see how he tackles this move. We saw Tommy Loft struggle with it a little bit. Wonder how Lucas Gertz is going to do it. He'll have to release the... Oh, look at that. Very Such smooth. good style. Doesn't quite get it in first time, but uses that momentum. Where Tommy Loft was thrashing, he looks so smooth there, Lucas Gertz. That was really well done because it, it is quite tricky. You have to time it right um, to release the one axe, and it's very far, and you know you're going to swing, and you just have to control it and hope your pick is stable enough in the wood. That was a great clip from him as he moves towards clip number six. He's only eight seconds behind Tommy Loft now. I think you see that with climbers that some start a little bit slower um, than others and are maybe a bit careful in the beginning and then maybe pick up momentum as they move. Um, through the route and some climbers climb consistently at the same speed. Makes the clip. Nice work, Lucas. Needs to keep traversing rightwards and then move off this ice barrel with that tricky wide move. So he just wants to make the clip before he tackles the move. Awesome. So he's actually ahead of Tomilov now. Not by very much, but he is ahead. Let's see how he does this move. He's much, much shorter than Alexei Tomilov. This is such a shoulder intensive move. If you see it like a oh, nice. Oh, yes. So good there from the 18-year-old Swiss. He just has to... Really, really incredible. good. This is 
see it's a pretty small hole. Absolutely minuscule. He's wanting to get the perfect position. Taking a second to shake. Still a long way to go for Lucas Goetz. Puts in the fig four over the left hand. Deep block over with that. Oh, this is obviously this is right. Oh, mate. Comes crashing into the broadcast tent. Careful there, big guns. Ah, oh, that's a shame. He looked so solid there. You know, he did, but that was that was such a long move. Um, and off at such a small hold. It's, you know, he went for it. He missed it the first time. He was a little bit unlucky that he didn't get it the first time, but um, that's how it goes sometimes. What a shame. Well, our next athlete will be Laura von Alman. We'll say hello, Kat, to her in a few seconds. But first, let's have a look at the replay of Lucas Goetz. Moved really well in that lower section, very slow but very calculated. Then picked up the pace, looked so solid there in that log swing. Boom. I see Lucas is using just um, standard length gnomic ice tools, um, which are probably a little bit shorter than a lot of the tools that competitors are using. But, you know, he, he seemed to have no problem doing a lot of those long moves. But, oh, that four just yeah. pops. Such a shame. Yeah, he'll be pretty disappointed with that. So here's Laura von Almen, our third Swiss athlete. Great to see so many Swiss climbers qualifying today. Yeah, this is actually a climber that I I am not that familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, she did compete here last year. Laura finished 29th here last year. She also competed in Ravenstein, did make the semi-finals there, finishing in 18th. Oh, well, that's an incredible improvement this year. Yeah. Um, she climbed really well in semi-finals, and she's well deserving of a place in the finals. So let's see what she can do with it. Look at that absolutely awful hold. Just looking at it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Reaches up, makes that first clip. There it is. Excellent work from Laura Van Holman. The transition between the ice and the plywood is, it can be difficult. Oh, oh no. no. Heartbreak. These holds, they're just so, so technical. They are so tricky and. That's a heartbreak. Such a shame. Only one Swiss climber remains. She'll be out. Here's the penultimate athlete. Yeah, Petra will be. Uh, Petra will be one to watch in this competition. I mean, it's funny because I was chatting to Petra before the competition. She said that she felt. Oh. Let's just watch that again. Oh, heartbreak. That's the problem, you know. You you want to move. You want to move up. I mean, you can't move your even slight nudge of the tool and so it's gone. Stable. Yeah. Well, that is the nature of competitions. Um, I was just about to say, I was chatting to Petra before the competition and she said that she's feeling strong for bouldering, but not for ice climbing. She hasn't been on tools very much this year. In fact, only once, two weeks ago. Only once? Yeah, or once or twice, I think she said, two weeks ago. Yeah, well, watching her in the semi-finals today, I, you know, Petra, she's such an incredible athlete. Um, she, she's so strong. 
she's technically she's she's strong physically she's strong um she always gives 100 percent and um Tell yeah me about it. I mean, here last year you were here last year you saw her giving 100 percent it was absolutely ridiculous. If you haven't seen that clip, do search it out on YouTube on the UIAA channel. Petra basically broke her knee mid route, hung there for a minute, crying, and then continued to con climb the route with only one leg. It was totally ridiculous. I have never seen anything like that, and probably never will again. And went on to take bronze medal. Yeah, and just that's, uh, that's just who Petra is, you know. Absolute demon. She's a complete champion. So hopefully we don't get to see that today. We just get to see her climbing well. And there are Alexei Tomilov and Lukas Gertz. That's the men's ranking so far. Our next male competitor will be Alexei Marshalov, 23-year-old Russian. Very promising athlete. Didn't quite have the best season last year, but he's certainly got the talent and the ability to do well. His best result last year was ninth in Beijing. Will asks, is the wall made of ice? Parts of the wall are made of ice. There are ice barrels. There's uh, parts of the structure that are entirely ice. And then the rest of it is a mix of plywood uh, for the feet and stone for the hands or axes. You'll be able to see those with those close-up shots in just a few moments when we have another athlete. Yeah, that's quite a good description you just give there, Liam. Um, it's like it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> because although it is Ice Climbing World Cup, um, there is a, a quite a, a variety of mediums. Um, and especially in Sass Bay, you've kind of got everything. You've got the ice barrels, you've got the ice wall, you've got the plywood panels. You've even got logs, I forgot those. The logs, yeah, they're special to Sass Bay. And um, they're, they're something competitors often can struggle with um, and depend on ice tools you're using and um, some are easier to um, pick into the the wood with but I hope that beer's not that little girl <laughs> I mean this is Europe but come on that's a bridge too far <laughs> pizza and a beer <laughs> they start him young in Switzerland I'm just getting it in my ear she's actually English that makes a lot more sense <laughs> It's a lager and a pizza. Oh dear. So we're almost ready to go with Alexei Marshalov. If you could pick your own background music to climb to, Ema, what would you pick? Do you know, that is um, an interesting question. Um, I have to think about that one, Liam. I'll let so you think about it. We've got another. <laughs> Oh, 15 athletes. You've got plenty of time <laughs> to think about it. Um, yeah, something a bit lively anyway. Um, not Lord of the Dance. Not Lord of the Dance. Yeah, doing a jig up there is definitely yeah, yeah. not what I want to be doing. That would be so much fun to watch, though. We've got someone on YouTube that says they would climb to Wait and Bleed by Slipknot. It's definitely energetic. Um, what would you climb to? You guys at home, maybe stick it in the comments or the chat box. If you could choose one piece of music to climb to, what would it be and why? There is Alexei Marshalov tying in the base of the route. He's going to get going on this men's final wall in just a few moments. Yeah, well, you talk about the music, Liam. That would be quite interesting if competitors were able to choose their own music. It would be really interesting. I think I'd choose Cheeky Girls. Cheeky Girls? No. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the Cheeky Girls? I do. Oh, gosh. Unfortunately, I do, too. <laughs> no, I, I don't know what I'd climb to. Probably something with, like, um, something quite housey or techno. Like real big beat. Just good vibes. Maybe some piano in there as well. 90s dance. Someone's asking me to say thanks for watching in Indonesian. I'm not even going to attempt that, but I will say thanks for watching to all the Indonesians watching. There's Alexei Marshalov beginning his route with 9 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. And you can actually see just on the right hand side of the structure. You can see our broadcast tent. You can see all the computers and bottles and things. In fact, 
Just put my hand. Here, you might be able to see my hand waving. Um, Alexei Marshalov moving up those first moves on those frictionless pebbles. Let's see how he's doing for time when he makes this first clip. Getting names in the track. Someone would listen to Turbo Killer by Turbo Killer by Carpenter Brut. 80s synthwave at its finest. It's coming from Greg. Andy Turner said he'd gone for Girls Aloud. <laughs> Which one? Sound of the Underground? Or uh, I don't speak French. I let the funky music do the talking. Radical Face, welcome home. We've got all sorts of tracks coming in. I wonder what I like saying Marshall off would pick. Would it be Eye of the Tiger? Well, it's depending on how he does in this final route, it may be his future yeah, song. <laughs> <laughs> Moves up to clip number two. He's 37 seconds behind the pace at the moment. Yeah, he's moving quite carefully, but you know, it's perhaps not a bad thing. Places that undercut under the volume on the left. Big deep lock with that right hand. So now we see the move from that. Oh, look at that, he Ina. did that. Yeah, he was, yeah, that's kind of the best we've seen it so far. Really, really composed, very controlled, throws in that fig four over the left hand, reaches up to make the clip. So he is moving a little bit slower than the other competitors, but he's still, he's, you know, he's still moving. Whole minute behind Tomilov, about 50 seconds behind Lucas Goetz. Richard Harper would climb to Demiurge, Demiurge by Mashuga. Nice. See the crew there reaching up and unclipping that clip off the log just to take some drag out of the system. Yeah, it's such a long route and um, the rope can feel really heavy. Finding a really strong position there, kicking into that panel to stop the ice barrel swinging around so much. Next comes that tricky move that we saw Alexi Tomilov struggle with a little bit, but Lucas Gertz totally bossed it. See how Alexei Marshalov deals with it. Very shouldery move, a lot of sling strength required. Coordination between the left hand and the right foot. And then, of course, the right hand to catch the hold. Watch after he's shaked. Shook? Watch after he's shook. <laughs> how he reaches across, watch his left chest. Back. Left side of his chest has got to be so engaged. Look at that. Very so powerful hard. move. And he's not quite hitting it with the right hand. Oh, foot pops. Well, that's the tricky thing with the ice barrels. As you can see, once you start moving, they start swinging in the opposite direction. So they're kind of pulling you further away from the holes. And, and that is what 
Lucas Goetz did so well. He just locked off that left arm, held the chest tight and reached across, managing to get that momentum. Come on, Marshalov. Big reach required now. Three minutes 44 on the clock. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to the men's final here in Saz Faye. It's the first final of the UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup for the 2018 season. Come on, Alexei. Come on, Alexei. Oh, he's oh. almost there. There nice. it is. Awesome work. He needs to kick across with those feet. Reset the center of gravity, get the weight below that hold. And now, of course, this is where we right. saw Lucas Gertz make the mistake, popping out of that fig four. So it'll be interesting to see what move he will do onto this next hold. I think um, we saw Alexei didn't do a figure four. Yeah. Marshalov yeah. owns that move. Totally. Deep lock over that left arm, catching it with the right. Makes clip eight with ease. He's moving really well now. He's starting to find that pace. He certainly is. He's definitely got a lot left in the tank. Reaching up into that ice barrel. Where's he off the ice barrel? Just obscured there, narrow view. Perhaps he isn't on the ice barrel. There doesn't seem to be much movement. Maybe the next hole is the ice barrel. Yeah, it's actually hard to tell from this angle. Oh, oh it was the ice barrel. Yeah. It's just very well secured. Well, this ice barrel isn't one of the swinging ones, so... It's, it's the kind ice of, box. Yeah, it's a little bit more welcoming. Davai, Alexei, come on. Two minutes on the clock. Needs to find some speed from somewhere now. Just trying to get some rope through the quick draws to make that clip. He just has to keep moving. Come on, Alexi. Whoa. That was a big chunk of ice came off there. Kicked it very hard. The whole thing came off. And in that right barrel, it looks like there's a big fracture in there as well. It does. I guess, like, it's a little bit warmer than it has been, so... And I believe ice breaking can't be called a technical incident. No, it can't. Like, these ice barrels are there for a reason, and they have the holes drilled in them um, so that it makes the competition more consistent for every player. But... Oh, oh. and he's just tired out. He's absolutely he exhausted. He did such a great job. He really fought for it. He was on there for a whole nine minutes. Yeah. Really good job. Good climbing. He is absolutely knackered. He really Looks like he might have banged his arm on the way down there. Let's take a look at that room attempt again. Someone's asking what would happen if the climbers drop their tools. Maybe you can answer that question, you mate. If you drop your tools, well, that's your attempt is finished. Um, so if you you can move on to hold and if you leave your tool behind, you can go back and get it. But once it once it falls off the structure, it's yeah, it's out of there. It is, and it happens sometimes. You it know, happened today. Yeah, to Cena. That's Good. it. Yeah, punched it out of her own mouth. Oh, look at that wow. chunk that came off, Heckers. That was a lot of ice. It certainly was. Let's just watch that final attempt again. So tired. Now wearing bib number 33 from South Korea. It's current world ranked number one, 
Hanare Song. Ima, you're pretty familiar with the Korean team. I am indeed, so I am pretty excited to see Nari climb here. Um, she is such an incredible climber. Look, she's just taken off so fast. Um, she put in a great performance here last year. Um, she last last season in total, like she's just she's physically strong, she's mentally strong. She's she climbs so gracefully and beautifully, and you know she's she's always always trains hard and always gives 100 percent. And you know is but she knows that um, she is always kind of knows that competitions are competitions and will never get very big headed that like she's the best of the best and she's so like for me i trained with her in korea and she's been incredibly helpful with um giving me advice and technical advice and time and advice and she's a very good friend so you know she was unstoppable last year she was and as the season got towards like progress most climbers get a little bit tired and she just got stronger and stronger it's and unbelievable yeah she of course finished six in the first co first competition of the season in durango then hoped again in beijing came third in, in the home competition in chongsong took gold came here to sasfe took gold and then went the week after to rabenstein and took gold yeah she, again. she just cleaned up and almost like flawless performance um, every time and yeah she can she can deal with the pressure she she's really good route finding she climbs really well like um, you, s you see climbers um, they climb qualification semi-final final and you know she's she climbs confidently and she's she's getting better and better you know I don't know well. how, how much more she can improve from last <laughs> year but you know, I'm excited to see her here climbing. And she looks on really good form. She certainly does. She's moving really well so far. Climbing into second place just by reaching the point that she's at now. And she's moving really quickly. Someone's pointed out that the handles on the tools look very long. They are extended handles, but as long as the tool fits into the UIAA box, then it doesn't matter. You can make whatever modifications you want. Yeah, well, the advantage of these slightly longer tools is that um, it makes it a little bit easier for hand changes um, and uh, the longer tools can be a little bit harder to manage and you can reach further so they have advantages and disadvantages um, but Nari has been climbing with these tools now for a couple of years and she's very confident with them and rightly so she's moving so well right now just withdraws that left tool out of the wood Look at that hole, it is it's absolutely right. It's scary looking it's at it. It's not cool, here. that is it? Just gives me the heebie jeebies. Yeah, it certainly does. Five minutes, 49 seconds on the clock. She's a whole minute ahead of a Katarina Vlasova. And she knows that she has to be a little bit careful here. Big deep lock. Oh, come on. Oh, no, right. Look at that right nice. tool, barely even a millimeter of movement there. Yeah, such good stability. She has such control. Reaches across into the ice barrel, reaches up with the rope to make clip. Oh, no, not yet. Just going to have a little shake. Reaches up to make the clip. Now she knows that she needs to set a good standard. She'll be looking for a top if she wants to be in with a chance of a medal position here in Sazfe. We have got four more athletes after her, all of which have got the potential to top two. So Nare needs to work very hard. Awesome work. Now, this is the point that we saw the Katarina Vlasova fall. Kicking so hard that the camera's shaking. There's clip number 11. 35 seconds ahead of Ekaterina Vlasova into that Stein. That puts her into first place. Come on, on the right, come on. Ekaterina Vlasova from Russia is leading. Makes clip number 12. Come on, Nare. 
She's looking really strong. She looks so strong right now. Really composed, still with four minutes and six, five seconds on the clock. At the moment, Ema, she just looks so relaxed. She does, you know, but I'm sure inside, like, she's probably, like, getting tired, but she's not showing anything. Um, she's keeping her focus really well. She's moving, she's moving confidently. She's doing everything right. Well, another big move now from clip number 14. Looks like she's going right up into that ice barrel. It's a long way. Easily reaches it with that right hand. Ooh, little foot pop, but no problem. Excellent core strength to get yeah, that big four she's in. So strong. Like I watch the Korean girls and I've trained with them in Korea and you know they they train so hard and um, they kinda they don't leave things for chance, you know. As you can see she's she's very technically capable and um, yeah, she's climbing really well. Come on, Nari. I can't help to be a bit biased with this no. one, Liam. <laughs> you, you can be biased. It's me that can't be biased. <laughs> I just want everyone to do well. But you do not have to be impartial. And of course, living and training with these girls, I fully expect you to be cheering them on. Clip number 15 now. Clipped and moving away from it for Hannah Rae Song. Come on. Just looking to find that best position to get over to the next hold, which you can see in the top of the screen. Just taking a second to shake. Crowd really getting behind her now in Saz Faye. Yeah, she just has to... Oh, she nice. hits it first time. Oh, oh, but just doesn't quite get what she needs from it. Come on, now. Right. Oh, what happened there? Was that a pop? I'm not exactly sure what happened, but you know. We'll have to see that in the replay. Yeah. She looks super solid. Whether, in, whether or not that will be enough for a medal, we'll have to wait and see. Really great work. And here's Nari. the ninja. Look at him in all black, Alexi Dengen. Right, let's check out Nare's songs effort again. Was low on the route, just finding a flow on those very poor holds. Really strong in that bridged position as she moved towards the halfway mark. Powering up that head wall. And this was at clip 15. This was the point where she fell. So let's watch carefully. She looked like she was getting tired. She went into the fig nine on the left hand, back yeah, into the four. You know, this is a move up to a very tricky hold and very hard to get yourself out of the figure four position. Ah, and it was the left hand that popped. Yeah. She couldn't recover on the right hand. So that's what happened. Such a shame there for Anare Song, but awesome, awesome effort nonetheless. Yes. Now, Dengin. I like watching Alexi climb. <laughs> I think everybody likes watching Alexi climb. And he climbed so well in Durango last year, taking his first ever gold medal. Had a great season overall. Finished in fourth place. He had all of the finals bar one in Cheong Song. Uh, I think Alexi has a very kind of unique style when he climbs and his personality kind of shows through his climbing and 
I don't know, he's, he seems to always think outside the box in a kind of way, and um, he always shows a lot of passion. He gets the crowd involved, and it's just, it's, it's fun to watch him climb. And he's a super nice guy, too. He's so nice. Yeah, he's so helpful and um, always full of advice. and Straight into that undercut. Yeah. So powerful there. Excellent bicep strength. Yeah, he's moving quite quickly now. He's eight seconds ahead of the other guys so far. See how Look at that, so solid kicking into the underside of that log. It's quite an interesting move. We've seen some really interesting moves in this competition so far. We certainly have. Um, the root setting has definitely been a bit different than we've seen in previous years. And Great to see it evolving. Well, it is. It's always good to see new things, and um, especially in SAS Bay, to have changed the structure and um, changed the the roots. You know, it's it makes it new new for everyone and keeps it fresh for you guys as athletes. Keeps it fresh for the spectators. Exactly. Just struggling to get that left tool out. A lot of energy being wasted there. Oh, come on, Alexi. Come on. You have to. There we go. Let's see how that's affected his time. Just slowing down a little bit here to make clip seven. Just starting to look a little bit uncomfortable, Uma. Well, if you look at the position he's in, it's probably not the most <laughs> restful position. Um, your feet, even to kick your feet straight into those plywood panels, they're quite far away. Um, so he's going to maybe try a different approach. Like you said, he thinks outside the box. One foot on the volume, one foot on the ice barrel. Oh, look at that. He's going to get oh, the man. distance. You oh. nutcase. <laughs> he was going to try and bypass that hole. Oh, he was there. Yeah. You know, in the semi final, he did that as well. I saw him, he was eyeing up a volume. With his head. He was going <laughs> I, was, I was actually sat here going, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> and they tried it again and you know that's that's why we that's why everybody enjoys watching him so big lock off that left hand required he's gonna cross over himself with the right to take that next hold which is absolutely awful come on Alexi excellent nice. hits it first time there Alexi Dengin Solid. approaching clip number eight let's see where his time is now he's definitely slowed down a touch But still ahead, 12 seconds. Yeah. So that goes to show how fast Dengen moved in that early section into the ice barrel. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome here to Saz Fay. You're watching the lead finals, the first of the season, for the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. Men and women are alternating this evening. My name is Liam Lonsdale, and I'm delighted to be joined by Ema McSwiggan. Feel free to drop us a comment in the chat box on YouTube and also in the comment box on Facebook. Why don't you like and share the broadcast, get your friends and family watching. Let's show everyone how awesome this competition is. If you'd like to get involved in the conversation on Twitter, you can use the hashtag UIAA Ice Climbing. So Dengin picking up that pace again now as he moves across those ice barrels. That's just such a big crack in that right hand one. We saw a huge chunk splinter off before under the power of Alexei Marshalov. Hopefully Alexei Dengin doesn't pull the holds off this one. Yeah, Makes the clip. Could see this break before the end of the competition. Hope not. It's going to be a lot of ice. You know, he, he made that just look so easy. That traverse. It's bigger fours. Into that speed structure, so he'll climb up that ice wall now. Jan Freikt has asked, when's Petra climbing? She'll be the penultimate woman. 
So in about mm, nine athletes, seven athletes from now rather. We've got Nathan tuning in from Ure. Welcome, Nathan. And that's right, there's another big ice climbing competition happening yeah, the Ure. Yeah, Ice Fest. Great to have you guys tuning in all the way over there. Hope you've had a great time out there. Actually, we're missing one of our top athletes, um, Angelica Rayner, is actually in Ure this, this year. She decided to take a year out from the World Cup competition, so... She's not doing any? She's not, no. She, she's she been doing it for a long time, I think maybe over 10 years, and she's kind of been at the top of her game for that time, and she just needs a rest, do something different. Understandable. Yeah. So Dengen now moving up to clip number 14. Looking really composed. Great clip there. Just kicking that left foot. Easy into the ice barrel by 15. Whoa, so aggressive. Two minutes, 20 seconds of the clock for Alexi Dengin. This next move is quite quite another far move, so it's not as if it's getting easier when it's getting towards the top. Come on, Dengin. Big move out with the left hand now. Come on. Oh, just manages to hold that. That right hand in the ice barrel just enough to stop him from falling off. Needs to just take a breath, recompose himself for this huge move out left. Looks like a big part of the structure just kicked out there as he kicked into the panel. Kicked it hard. Yeah, yeah I'm not really sure what happened there. It's like and a I joining can't... slat or something. Let's see what the judges say about that. One minute, 18 seconds left on the clock for Alexi Dengin. Move anyway. Look at that commitment over onto the left hand. Throws in that fig nine, readjusts himself. Makes clip 16. He's now 25 seconds behind Alexei Tomilov. He's got less than a minute on the clock. But if he can take these next holds, then he'll go ahead of Tomilov. Come on, Dengin. 40 seconds, give it everything. Nice, awesome solid. work. Needs to pick it up another gear now. He's got 30 seconds on the clock. I think for a top, he's gonna have to Come do on, something Alexei. magical. He's climbed so, so far, 23 seconds, makes clip number 17, that puts him into first place. Come on, Alexei Dengin, give it everything. Into the Stein on 17. The top is approaching, Come move on. by move. 10 seconds. Five seconds. Come, Come on, on Alexi Dengin. Tag it, do something. Flicks to the ice barrel and that's time up for Alexi Dengin, but what an awesome effort. What an incredible climb. He must be absolutely exhausted. I can imagine. Brilliant work <laughs> for Alexi Dengin. And he cheers to the crowd. <laughs> what a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly is. I love that guy. There's no doubt about it, he left nothing out there. He, he tried hard. He really did. He's, yeah, he's a professional athlete. He's like, he gives it everything. He did it extremely well. Let's see that replay again. There's going to be a lot of replays. I have to say I was worried about him at that point, Ema, when he was in that log. Yeah. He did really struggle to get that out and it looked like he wasted a lot of energy, but he managed somehow to just pull it back. Do you know, I kind of just haven't watched him in the past. I, I, I knew he was going to work it out. He um he was maybe he didn't say anything at the time. Well, 
Yeah, I guess like he's, you he's got that used very to quiet, things. Didn't you? <laughs> oh, I knew the lottery numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just, you know, you just kind of expect he's um, he's he's well able to deal with. Um, problems that come up and he absolutely is and yeah. with the time waning and his energy levels dropping he still managed when he's almost horizontal to make that clip at 17 and get into the ice barrel just as the time ran out and you can see how close the top was yeah one more good move or so and he would have been up there well, anyway that's Dengin done okay. for today <laughs> next up <laughs> what to say about this climb is Enab Kobra Musavi from Iran last year was Consistent semi-finalist, um, or was she consistent? Let me just remind myself. She made semi-finals in Chongsong, and she made semi-finals in Ravenstein. Um, missed semi-finals in here in South Bay, placing 23rd. And then finished overall in 18th place. Day one of the competition, came to the qualifiers and just tore it down. She certainly did. Like, I think um, she is the one athlete this year that um, has just shown like incredible improvement um, you know I met her at the technical meeting the first night um, at registration and I knew there was something different about her I just kind In of what way? I just had a feeling I was like she just she had an air of confidence about her she was looking really strong she just I was thinking yeah this girl is maybe this year she's going to show us um, what she's made of and yeah incredible well. like the qualification you know, she just sailed through it, and um, it's. She just looked strong. She looked. She looked as if she was confident in the holes. She, yeah. Qualified in third place she did. for the semi-finals, and then in semis again looked so strong, climbing fast, efficiently. She was precise. She was aggressive, and she qualified in fourth place. She did, yeah. So you know, it's in qualification. People generally are a little bit shakier, and um, then in semi-finals, people relax a little bit more, and then in finals, you see them kind of coming into their own. But right from the start, she was, yeah, she was right there, and she was focused, and... Oh, no! Uh, oh! Zainab, those holds, another victim you know? falls to the technical Sam holds. Sam clavian has got a lot to hunt for. <laughs> You know, it's really important for her. It's, um, she was having such a good run of it, and you know, I'm not really sure what happened there. I just, I, I guess I wasn't expecting it to. I definitely wasn't expecting it. I was off. just looking through my notes to say which competitors that she'd beaten. Huge names in that qualifying round and in the semi finals, but let's just watch that back. She was looking solid. Do you know the, <gasps> the transition across from the ice here? It's like, it's quite tricky. I mean, she's just got to shake this off, shrug it off, and come back for Ravenstein. Fighting, I guess. So she was a clip number. Oh, that uh, tool just popped in the left hand. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it didn't even move. It was there was barely any movement. Did well, she read I think it right? That's yeah. I'm not really sure. This problem with some of the stone holds, like you can feel secure, and but the, it can slip so easily. It'll be, yeah, she'll be, I'm sure she'll be got up with that, but like, she has to look at her performance over the whole weekend and, um, you know, she's, she did extremely well and, yeah, she's got next weekend. Looking forward to seeing her in Rabenstein. Hopefully she can shrug that off, as I said, and come back even stronger. Next athlete in the men's competition. Oh, no. Speaking of people that turned it on. Tristan Ladovan. <laughs> I don't know what to say about Tristan. Like this year he's just he's on fire. I think like he he's climbing with such passion and such aggression and like in the semi final his performance was it was just, crazy it thing was great is, to watch. It was beautiful to watch. Yeah. But Luna, his little brother, has had a brilliant preseason. He's won two European Cups, he's beaten Russians, he's looked so solid. And Tristan's looked good, but nowhere near what his brother looked. Luna, with a fall, missed out on qualifying for the semis, but Tristan 
snuck in there yeah. and then just came out to the semis and climbed for the pair of them. Yeah. He absolutely tore it down. He really did. Like, well, you know, I guess maybe Luna came into this competition with a lot of pressure on his shoulders because he's done so well. Yeah. And like, Saspe is not maybe the right place to come in with a lot of pressure <laughs> because it's so difficult and so tricky. And um, and if you're more nervous, then you you know it's harder. And um, Tristan maybe had um, a little bit less pressure. And you know he's yeah, sure. he, you know he's he's an equally strong climber and he really proved that in the semi-finals um, he just yeah he just climbed with such power and you know he just he he owned it he, he absolutely did own it um, just to give you some context for Tristan and his history last year was his first season on the tour he finished 20th in Beijing and 28th in Chongsong those were his best results. They were his best results yeah. last year. Otherwise, he finished outside the top 30. Well, <laughs> he's definitely made a, a massive improvement. <laughs> he's guaranteed eight. Yeah. I'd love to see Tristan climb well here, as I'm sure everybody would. I'm sure there's a lot of people at home cheering for him. Ale Tristan, Ale. Crimping that hole with the left hand. Used that technique a few times in the semi-finals. Uh, he's moving quite quickly here and you see he's looking ahead before he was even on that hold to the next hold. So coming up. between Lucas and Dengen he's sitting at the moment about six seconds behind Tomilov who's our current second place. Crimping it again. And that Talented is rock climber. quite a small hold to be crimping with your gloves oh, on. on. It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> Well, you know, when you've got your gloves <laughs> on and... <laughs> he's on massive jugs for his feet and he's got a jug for his hands. <laughs> no, he's looking really strong as he moves past clip number two. Just needs to stay composed, place that Stein, great hip flexibility there. Look how open his hips are, keeping the body close to the wall, keeping the center of gravity close. The hips do not lie. There's clip number three for Tristan Ladevon. Yeah, this hole, the people have been spending a little bit of time getting the right position. Let's see, there he goes again. He's taken almost every hold with his hand. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to Saz Bay. We are live with the first lead final of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup season. My name is Liam Lonsdale, and I'm joined this evening by Ireland's Ima McSwiggan. You are watching Tristan Ladevant of France in his first ever World Cup final. Right now, he looks composed, he looks collected. Oh, look at that, he's placed his right axe first. Let's see what he does here. Interesting move. Really composed. And he's going to leave his axe down, make the clip, and then kind of climb back down. Interesting move. Super interesting. Yeah, you know, it's not always recommended to leave your ice axe, but if he's certain it's secure there it just seems to be that's not going anywhere is it no it's not <laughs> nicely done really nice very efficient super confident in that placement reaches down to make that clip at number six Ale Tristan come on dude Another climb struggling there to get that go. left hand out. There it is, much quicker than Dengin was. Now let's see when he clips number seven where he sits amongst the other athletes. Six minutes, 10 seconds on the clock. <laughs> Needs to find that position to get off that barrel. Come on, Tristan. Oh, that's a tricky one. Rope in the oh, mouth and clip in uh, the mouth. Uh, axe in the mouth, even. There we go. Let's see how he does this move now. So he's 41 seconds behind Dengin. That's a lot of time that he needs to recover if he wants to get up to where Dengin was. Dengin barely stopped between here and the top point that he fell. 
Not interesting. Just trying to get some swing off that barrel. As you can see, it's just it's just rotating backwards and forwards. Shaking out that left hand, trying to get rid of some of that pump. Come on, big guns. Ale. Nice, opting for the lower hold, less leverage on the ice barrel. Yeah. You're really gonna have to push. Whoa. Oh, his feet pop. Good recovery. Come on, Tristan. Oh, I'm getting pumped just watching. Yeah, it's, you know, it, it's, it's strenuous even just hanging there, especially at that stage in the route. But he can do it. He's well capable of doing this move. I mean, we saw him go all points off early. Yeah. He did a full dyno. He did. Totally ridiculous. I've never seen anything like it. He was hands-free and then jumped to another hold. Uh, yeah, that was impressive. To say the least. Come on, Come Tristan. On, Tristan. Fight, mate. You can see he's tiring now. He needs to give it. Oh, the feet just aren't kicking in. He's doing everything that he possibly can. You can see it is in his eyes. Come on, yeah, big guns. Yeah, he's really fighting. He's going to try. I don't know what he's going to try. Gonna try and get some energy from the crowd. That's Love what he's that. gonna try. He's only 19 years old. Great to see so many young climbers. Come on, Tristan! Come on, Tristan. People tuning in from Zamat. I do believe the roads and rails have been closed in Zamat, so anybody over there is stranded, at least for the next 24 hours. Hope you're all wrapped up, warm, enjoying the hot toddy of sorts. Drink responsibly. <laughs> Come on, Tristan! <laughs> Kicks in with the right foot. Come on. Generates the swing. Look at him, using that right arm to get some momentum. Come on, Tristan! Oh, he's so tired. Oh, he he can tired. barely pull himself up. He must be getting <laughs> Oh, he's trying so he hard. Really is. Come on, Tristan. Everyone's willing him on. It's so hard to know what to do here, yeah. especially as his energy levels literally run down. Like watching the gas on a tank just fade away. Come on. Come on, Tristan. Oh. Oh, gosh, it's so painful. Yeah. Come on, Tristan. <laughs> oh, he's so close, he can't hold on. Oh, that's such a shame. But what a great effort from Tristan Ladevon in his first ever senior final. Incredible. Um, he's, Brilliant. He's had such a great weekend, and, you know, I'm excited to see what he's going to do in the rest of the competitions. Um, he really gave it everything. Let's watch that back. Like, look how fast he, he starts. He ran up the start, yeah. didn't he? And he was using all sorts of little tricks. Using holds for his hands, pre-placing the picks, lowering the log. He was. And then it all just fell apart at the end there. Yeah, well, you know, um, it's been it's been a long weekend for a lot of these climbers and um, to have done the semi-finals earlier today and the finals on quite late. And, you know, the exhaustion of even being in isolation for such a long time in yeah. a day, like it takes its toll on people. And um, we certainly put a good fight in. He certainly did, yeah. Now, another Korean athlete, another friend of Ima. Tell us about Unseon Shin. Well, you know, this girl, she's just an incredible athlete. She, I've trained with her, and this year in particular, I think, you know, she, she climbs she climbs with the guys, you know, she quite often outclimbs the guys, and um, 
she's physically strong she um she's mentally strong she she's a great boulder as well um so i think she gets a lot of strength from that um and she climbs she's maybe one of the most elegant climbers you know i i think she she has such a nice style about the way she climbs and she trains really hard um you know i really want her to do well she had a great today. start to the season last year finishing first in durango then finished second in beijing and took a third medal it was a bronze in Rabenstein. yeah and we see how quickly she just moved off the start there absolutely flew up there desperate placements but she's moving so confidently through that position she really is and she's always she's always really light on her feet um three seconds ahead how does that help her do you think being so as you say light on the feet well you know i think she's just she's just physically very fit and i know this year in particular she's doing a lot of running she does a lot of crossfit and um, she climbs and a lot, so she's just really strong. So um, I think she's our oldest semi-finalist as well. Thirty-seven years old. Yeah, you know, I, she's just getting stronger. It's ridiculous. So, there's. Um, That's one no thing limits. that I do love about ice climbing is that even at thirty-seven, she's there, looking so strong against athletes who are eighteen half her age yeah you know it's 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 really inspiring and she she herself says you know that with age you do get a bit more experience and you're more confident in yourself and that so that's um part of it but yeah she she just loves climbing you know she um she boulders she ice climbs she sport climbs she's and she's just really enthusiastic she's she's really good with some of the younger members of the team and she's she's always been extremely helpful to me and always full of advice and like quite often i do the route finding with um Yunsun and nari and they have a lot of experience and they can read routes really well and they they have the route planned you know i i, I find um that's something that the top girls they all know um exactly where they're going they their hand changes with their ice tools are they're very efficient they rarely will make a mistake it's kind of pretty flawless but that comes with a, an awful lot of hard work and um, these girls put it in and they really deserve to be there and to do really well in the finals so i'm really hoping to see a great result so oh. do we all oh, wow stumble there did she just drop her axe and catch it? She did just drop her axe and, and catch it, so it nice. did, did not seem to phase her at all. Well, of course, she dropped her axe in Durango when she won that gold medal. That and the, the rope pinned it. Actually, her score only counted to the point that she dropped it, but amazing that she caught it off the rope. She did, yeah. It's totally ridiculous. That written Durango and the rope drag and everything towards the end. Like, I. She did an amazing job. So, hanging loose there on that one hand. No problem at all. So relaxed. Let's see if she makes this next clip where she's sitting time-wise. She's moving, she's, yeah, she's moving quite quickly. Reaches across, makes the clip. There it is. Wow, quite a bit slower than Nare Song. One minute twenty-eight. Okay. She, yeah. Really needs to pick up that pace. Is what she needs to do. Four minutes and thirty seconds remain on the clock.
Interesting that she's going for the placement before clipping. Uh, I think she looked at the clip and then she thought it would be. Oh gosh, this is so horrible to watch. Those holds are so bad. But Wun Xian Shin shows ultimate class, total composure, no problem at all. Matches in, reaches up. Smooth. Just readjusting the rope so she's not tangled in it. That it was quite a difficult move, quite a difficult lock off and such a small hold, but she just did it with with such ease. So she's three minutes twenty left in the clock. A oh, little foot pop there, but that right hand keeps her in place. Come on, Sonny. Big swing nice. up for that left hand. <laughs> the wall shaking with every <laughs> kick. There's clip number 11. One minute 50 behind Hanare Song. Muntianshin sits in second place. Cranking off that Stein. Just taking a second to shake. Clear some of that pump out of the forearms. Looks back for the clock. Two minutes, five seconds. Big reach with that right hand. Hits it, no problem at all. Really good core strength there as she swings around that hold. Just limiting that barn door. Goes over the right hand with the left leg into the figure four. She knows she has to be careful in these holes. One minute, 15 seconds on the clock. Drops the fig four in over that right hand. Up with the left. And of course, she is a lot of time behind Hanare, but Hanare popped, so she still could beat her. Well, I think she knows she has to be careful in these stone holes, so. I think once she gets onto the ice barrels, we could see her move pr pretty fast. Moves the clip out of the way to then take the next one and clip it successfully. That's clip 14 made, almost a whole three minutes behind Song. Into the fig four over that left hand. Look at that placement, totally ridiculous. Cuts loose into the barrel, 23 seconds remain. She is now in first position. Wow. Come on, Yun Sun. Come on, 10 seconds to go. She needs that clip. Oh, she really needs that clip. Five seconds to go. Three, two, one. Oh, no, she doesn't make the clip. So that will be 14 for her. And you can see there's still three more wow. long clips to go before the top. Such a long route. Got to move so fast. Great job, Yinsun. She doesn't know how she's done, so we'll have to wait till she gets to the floor to find out. That was a lot of climbing. It, yeah, 
you know, I can't even imagine it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's such a long route. But you know what, there's a lot of climbing in Chongsong. There is a lot of climbing, I guess. Maybe it's a different style of climbing, and mm -hmm. maybe, well, in the past, anyway, the holes have not been all these um, really difficult stone holes, so uh -huh. you can move a little bit faster, and like when you have to have keep that much tension all the time, it's so tiring. So, and moving between the barrels to the wood to the, yeah, there's, there's a lot of transitions and well, out next in the women's competition will be Petra Klingler of Switzerland. Expect a huge performance and a huge reception for her. But before that, another Swiss resident, but it's Russian climber Nikolai Primorov. <laughs> And there you see that head wall is absolutely massive and for such a long distance you've got to be totally, totally dialed in. That's no the thing. Margin for error. It doesn't get like to a point where you're like, oh I'm into easy ice now or something. It's um yeah, it's hard. Hard to stay focused and hard to keep tension that whole way. Well, you are watching the finals of the first round of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup here in Sazfe. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, make sure you like and share the broadcast. Please feel free to write a comment as well. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Let us know who you are supporting. My name's Liam Lonsdale, and I'm joined this evening by Ireland's Ema McSwiggan. And on your screen right now is Nikolai Primorov of Russia. Nikolai looked in great shape today. He really did. Um, I think his semi-final climb, he just he was the first out and he climbed so smoothly. Um, the insane boulder problem in the middle of the route, he did it so smoothly. And I think we were, as spectators, it was so nice to watch because looking at the route, we weren't sure how the guys were going to tackle it. And well, after so many guys before him had fallen on that low point as well, he was the first to get yeah, up there. That's right. So with 14 seconds behind the pace at the moment. What were you going to say, sorry, Ema? No, he's just a really strong, solid climber, and he he climbs really smart. I think he's um, he he climbs with a good pace, and um, his route finding is not normally really good. And yeah, he's a he's a good climber to watch. Reaches off a clip three, makes that. 28 seconds off the pace that Dengin set. But Dengin was absolutely flying. He certainly was, yeah. Primov opting to reach across before he makes the clip. Really good strength. Great core tension between the left foot and the right hand. And he's doing what Tristan Ladevon did as well. Uh-oh. Don't miss that clip, Nikolai. Uh-oh. He's oh, missed the clip. No. This is gonna he cannot clip oh, no, this no, next no. clip. If he clips it, he's out. Nikolai, you've missed the clip. Oh he knows he's Oh he's gotta go, he's back, go up. back. Oh, this is horrible. But he saw it. He's you know, it's so easy. It happens so easily in competitions like you're... Especially down climbing. Yeah, it's not something we're used to. And that clip is quite high. But... Oh, this is precious seconds and precious energy that it's costing him. There's clip five. Excellent work from Primorov. Now he needs to pick up that pace. Use that athletic frame to get through this next tricky sequence. Make clip number six, it's a whole minute and eight seconds behind Dengin's pace now. Yeah, it, it has cost him a bit of time, but he's still capable of picking up the pace and let's see how he does this next move. It looks like, 
Oh, don't put it in. No, it's in. Uh, Did he miss clip number six? I thought he clipped it. Did it unclip itself? I don't know what it is. I don't know what just happened. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the replay and see if the judges call him down. He definitely did clip number six. He did. He definitely clipped it. Can just see did on my just, replay. Did it like, could that be so unfortunate? Yeah, it unclipped itself. What? What does that mean? <laughs> Do you know, I have never seen this happen before. I've never seen it happen before. We'll see if he can recover from this. So now, kicks in. We'll have to wait and see what the judges decide, but he definitely made that clip. Oh no, he's gonna have to go back. Be interesting to see what he does now. Whether that's going to bother him, it's going to interrupt his flow. So he's went back and made that clip. Great effort there nice. from Nikolai First Primorov. Goal. Great composure. Kicks in with the right foot. Now he needs to pick up that pace. He's only got three minutes and 50 seconds remaining. He's only at clip number seven. Really didn't go his way those last 10 meters after looking so strong at the start. You know, it's just <laughs> I, to have two incidents with the clip in, it's kind of yeah, it's a lot of bad luck. The uh, judges have called him down. No, that's such a shame because he definitely clipped it. But I don't know, like in, in that case, I'm not sure what it says in the rule book. Maybe it's up to the the chief judge in charge to make a call on it. What a shame. The judge, president of the jury, the judge is in the room now, so I'm just going to listen. We can see there the rope is clipped into the quick draw. It's definitely in there. He definitely clipped it, and then it unclipped itself. Crazy. Never seen that happen. That is just, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen, whether they're going to... Maybe he'll appeal? Maybe they'll let him climb again. I don't know. We'll have, we'll have, to, have to wait and see. Well, Nikolai comes down, and our next athlete emerges, and it is, of course... Petra Klingler, world bouldering champion, ice climbing World Cup gold medalist, boulder World Cup gold medalist, European boxing champion one time. Really? Really. And here she is today in front of a home crowd in Sazfe looking to lay down the law. Let's see what Petra Klingler can bring to this final here in Sazfe. She's our penultimate athlete in the women's competition. If you are just joining us, a very warm welcome to the lead finals. It's the first of the season here in Sands Bay. And it's been pretty exciting so far. My name is Liam Lonsdale. I'm joined this evening by Ema McSwiggan. And you're watching Petra Klingler. This course, this wall, this... Oh, oh no, oh. Petra! Oh. Oh. Did that really happen? Oh. Oh. I can't, I'm speechless. Petra Klingler out of the competition. Another oh. low pop. Oh, she's going to be so mad. Such a shame. Do you know that's... I, I just can't believe that just happened. No. Liam, it's... Um, she just went to reposition herself and I guess she popped out of the ice. She just looks so solid and then wasn't. Well, you know, like you don't even be thinking of the ice because the ice is the easy part and all you're thinking of that next little pebble hold 
that you're trying to get to and you know it's that's really not how she saw that going and it's not how we saw it it's going not. either petra klingler will almost certainly finish in eighth place with that very very low fall last year here it was the scene of her incredible attempt after destroying her knee Nikolai protesting to the judges. Now, taking a look with the judges, Kazarin Bon out there, trying to explain that he definitely clips the clip. Let's watch Petra though. Left hand. Oh, oh Petra! Such a shame. This angle's definitely. A, oh, you know? it just slipped out. Yeah. Oh, that's such a shame for Petra. That is not how we wanted her to finish this competition. Not. not how the home crowd wanted her to finish this competition. Well, it's definitely it's not devastating. how she wanted to finish. Yeah. Devastating indeed. Oh. What a shame. Well, onwards and upwards. We have to move on. Our next athlete will be Mohamed Reza Safdarian. He'll be followed by our final female athlete of the evening, Maria Tolokanina. There's Kendra Stritch in the centre there. She was my co-coms in the women's, uh, in the men's semi-final. She was giving me some advice, Liam. Was she? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Great. She's a great co-commentator. Yeah, she is. So there, the judge is still discussing what happened. Let's see if I can get any more information. I'm gonna have a quick word. We're gonna have our technical staff see if I can find out what's happening. Okay, Mohamed Reza Safdarian's on the wall. Ima, I just had a quick chat with one of our technical guys and uh, found out exactly what happened. Okay. So he was actually disqualified from the point that he climbed back up the log. Really? If you forget to clip, you're not allowed to reclimb the route. You're not allowed to climb backwards. You're not, you're not allowed to move the axes. Okay. So that was the point. It was actually after, before he'd even had the unclipping scenario. Okay, so you're, you're allowed to move... So you can reach back to clip, but, but you, you can't, can't reclimb and go back and clip. <sighs> Such a shame. Know, it's just really unfortunate for him. You win some, you learn some. Yeah, well, uh, that's a rule I didn't know. I didn't know. And I've read that rule book at least twice. Yeah. Many you know, times. It's not something you kind of consider. I guess that, like, you're going to be traversing down a log and forget to clip. It's, you know, none of the competitors have ever thought maybe perhaps about that. Look yeah. at that, it's an Irish flag hanging oh, over there. Wow. You, know. you spotted that. <laughs> you know, there, my friends came to the competition to watch me climb, but unfortunately, I didn't make it past <laughs> qualification. <laughs> so, there, um, yeah, some year though. Next year. Yeah, next year. Maybe we'll year. see you crush it in Rabenstein. Oh, so, well. Mohamed Reza Safdarian, who, I mean, he had a phenomenal competition as well. He really did. He qualified first in speed and first in lead. Yeah, and this guy has so much confidence, like watching him climb. Um, the Iranian team 
have improved so much there they this year i think they're going to crush um the competition in general and both the men and women um he in semi-final you know in the middle of the boulder traverse problem like he was there with no hands on the wall and he he waved at the crowd to, <laughs> to get some cheers and like and stuck it and stuck it complete composure yeah and he's only 25 yeah he um no clipping errors for him so far don't want to jinx it it's yeah the clip clipping is there there were a few um z clips earlier today there were so yeah eddie bertling and masha edler yeah it's it happens you know it's hard to focus on everything in the competition Mohamed Azasaf Darian moving really quickly. He really is. He's looking really strong. 25 seconds ahead of Alexi Dengin. Slightly different approach to this move. taking a second to shake and Safdanian is another one of our shorter competitors so it'll be interesting to see how he tackles that move kicks into the bottom of the ice with the left Similar foot style to Alexi. Oh. excellent yeah, really nice it. move there from Mohamed Reza Safdarian taking a second to shake he looks so composed he certainly does and he's moving really well and he's moving really fast he definitely looked like he had the potential to make finals last year and he did actually make the finals here it was his first ever finals and he placed eight that's right yeah he's already beaten that yeah i say he's at this stage he's just going for it crowd really getting behind him He's super strong, like in semi-finals. Some of the, the last moves in the semi-final route were so difficult, but he, yeah, he, he, he cruised, cruised it. it. Yeah. <laughs> I think even with the lack of experience competitions, like he looks like a seasoned competitor. Um, he has that appearance. He's moving really well, making very few mistakes. Reaches back out into that ice barrel with the right hand. He's skipping the yeah. first barrel. Makes clip number nine. On a par with Dengin now, just six seconds behind him. You can see that huge chunk of ice where it ripped off from earlier. Big scar. Stays clear of it. Picking up the pace now through those barrels. It's clip number 10. 15 seconds behind Dengin now. There's not much in it. He's teammates end up Musavi behind him. That's a great clip. Throws the pick into the ice. Quick match, quick shake. Now he needs to pick up the pace. And there he there goes. There he goes, he's right. No stranger to this wall, having competed in the finals of the speed competition yesterday. Yeah, it's interesting to see he's so strong in both disciplines. Um, shaken out a bit I'm sure he's love he that <laughs> I am a big fan of anyone that gets the crowd going the Mohammed Reza Safdarian is doing that with great work indeed in that fig four on the barrel at clip 13 
We've got people tuning in from Egypt right now. Very warm welcome to the Egyptians tuned in. We've got people tuning in from Sweden, Switzerland, Great Britain, all over the world, Russia, the States. Great to have you all tuned in. Thanks so much for joining us here in this final. Two minutes 30 on the clock oh. at clip 14. Manages to avoid the Z clip. Just trying to get the rope round the barrel to avoid the drag. He's now in third position. Only one athlete is after him. So if he can get up into second place, he'll be guaranteed one medal, which would be absolutely phenomenal. Just trying to make this clip before he does the traverse move. Come on, Mohamed Reza. Come on, Reza. 126 on the clock. Still time. I think he's going to try and make this clip. He's definitely looking he tired, though. He is. You know, and it's Come a hard on, clip to make. Oh, mate, you just need that clip. Come on, Mohamed Reza Safdaliam. The crowd in Sazfaya behind him. Come on, dude. He can do it. Yes, nice. great clip. That was very smart climbing. You can just keep going now. It says he's Come in the on. lead, but that is not correct. He's not in the lead yet. Still got moves to make, and he's only got 17 seconds to do it. Yeah. Is it can he make one more hole? Come on, Dreza. Get that clip. Five. Get that next four, hole. Three, two, on. one. Oh, he tagged oh. it, but not with enough time. Axe comes flying down. Amazing wow. effort from the Iranian in his second ever final. Incredible. Brilliant work from Mohammad Reza Kurye Safdarian of Iran. What an incredible climb. He has to be he has to be over the moon with that. Definitely gonna be proud of that. Yeah. So only Maxim Tomilov and Maria Tolokanina are remaining. First out will be the Russian rocket herself, current world speed and lead champion. Second in the world last year in the overall rankings. Be very interesting to see how she does here today. She looked so solid in Sazfe this morning. She looked so solid yesterday. Last year she had a bit of a nightmare here. Missed out on the finals if I remember correct. No, I think she fell early in the finals, placed eighth. Yeah, last season was maybe not her best season, but she finished off overall quite well. But um, she, yeah, she looks really strong. You know, she's she's so um, she's got such strong lock off power. She moves really quickly. Yeah, she's she's got all the technical skill. She's a pint-sized pocket rocket, <laughs> but she moves unbelievably she does yeah you know for her size and stature yeah the power that she generates the it's energy true. that she has it's nothing short of incredible yeah she's um uh, and to be able to be like leader in speed as well like that's it's pretty amazing it is pretty amazing so we'll be interested to see what she can do so there are results as it stands Laura Van Olmen, Petra Klingler, Zeynep Kovar, Rusevi, Sina Gertz making up the bottom four. Lassava in bronze medal position. Who'd have thought it? Once Yonjin in second, and at the moment, Hanare Song in first. Only Maria Telekanina can knock those places down.
So there's Maria Tolkanina in the center of your screen. Wonder how tall she actually is. Five foot maybe? Do you know I'm not really sure. How uh, tall are you? How tall am I? I'm five foot six. And she's way shorter than you. She would be a bit shorter than me now. Mm. Yeah, Maria, when you watch her climb and you can see how deep she can lock off moves, it's just, yeah, it's... Um, so there's the ranking in the men's competition. Fifth place, Tristan Ladevon. Fourth place, Lucas Gertz. Third, Alexei Marshalov. Second, Alexei Tomilov. And first, Alexei Dengin. Only Maxim Tomilov could knock Dengin off that top spot. Okay. Primorov's result not on the screen there, but he will be sitting in sixth place. And in fact, Mohamed Reza Safdarian's place wasn't on there as well. So I believe he's in second. So those weren't quite up-to-date results on the men's rankings. Don't worry too much about that. Okay, here's Maria Tolkanina moving very confidently up that first section, just like we saw Petra Klingler do. And we would not have said that Petra Klingler would fall out of that ice placement that Tolkanina has. But then it happened. Yeah. Tolkanina can't get the axe out. Using the hold with her hand. Oh, wow. oh. I've been high before making these clips. Well, it's, she's, it's a, it was an efficient way to clip. Very efficient indeed. She's on exact par with Hannah Ray's song at the moment. There's clip three. She's now five seconds ahead of the pace set by Hannah Ray's song earlier. Maria Song is current first place. Yeah, I think Maria Talakanina is she's very capable of making top in this race. No 12 seconds behind. He's chopping and changing both ways at the moment. the transfer to that right hand panel towards clip six awful hold this stone one Onto the ice barrel. Let's see what time she's on as she makes that clip. Moving really, really well. Now the whole 36 seconds behind Nare's song. Moving really efficiently up that log, using the holds that have already been made by others, saving a bit of extra energy. Yeah, it's a smart way to climb. Bridges out onto that ply with the right foot. Come on, Masha. Look at that placement. She is so solid on that awful, awful pebble. Yeah. Can I just try and change? Oh, gosh. I think she wants to change that point. She holds, really does. But it's hard when the pick is already there. Yeah. 
Nice, really good composure. Yeah, I think so, like you can see it's the likes of that, that's like experience and um, She's got she a lot knows, of that. yeah, she knows when to um, backtrack if she has to. If you are new to the sport, just to give you an idea of how dominant Maria Tolokanina has been, back in the 2016 season, she won every competition apart from one. Last year, she won a gold medal in Beijing. She won a silver medal in Rabenstein and bronze medal overall. In 2009, she took the overall title. In 2013, she took the overall title. 2014, she took the overall title. And in 2016, she is absolute Just, monster. She's world yeah. champion. Unbelievable. It's incredible to think that, like, um, to stay at that level for so long. For so long. Yeah. And what's crazy is the years that she didn't win were the years that she was having babies. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and she came back stronger from stronger. that. Stronger? <laughs> How's that a thing? Four minutes and six seconds on the clock there for Maria Tolokanina as she approaches clip number 13. Just behind Nare Song's pace, which for sure when I was watching it, I thought would be a top level pace as in she would have enough time to get to the top, but that pick yeah. blowing in the fig four position cost her. So we cut, oh, oh wow, she just held that. That was a good save. <sighs> Thought Tolokanina was out then. Excellent recovery, needs to find that composure yeah. again. Oh, oh she's out! Unbelievable! Maria Tolokanina yeah. falls and you can see the frustration in her body language. She is not happy with that. Got it with about that. I, I don't know exactly what happened. She get the hold in the wrong place or? We'll have to wait for the replay, but she's so disappointed and understandably so. So now we know we have a confirmed result in the women's competition. Gold medal will go to your friend, <laughs> Nare Song. I would say I'm very happy <laughs> And um, silver medal will go to your friend, Sun <laughs> Shin. <laughs> well, you know, the, both of them, they really deserve it, Liam. Um, I'm not just saying that because they're friends of mine. I know how hard those girls train and I know um, how determined they are. And um, yeah, they're, I'm, I'm delighted for them. <laughs> well, me too. Now we go to the men's competition. Where up next we have Maxim Tomilov. Let me take a look at these results. So we thought Tolokarina did well. 2012, Tomilov took the overall title. 2014, he took the overall title. And 2015 and 2016. Monster. Yeah. Absolute monster. Oh. Oh, such a shame. That pick just popping off there. Yeah. There he is. Silent warrior. <laughs> he is. Very rarely opens his mouth. Walks around the, the competitions very quiet. He conducts is himself quite, very calmly. Yeah. And you know, like, if things don't go his way, he's very, um, he takes it so well. So and he, composed. Yeah. I think that's a sign of, like, a, he's very professional in his nature. Big shout sports. out to the Sheffield crew. Sheffield Crews tuned in, I believe. Maxim Tomilov reaching over high with that right hand. Nine minutes and five seconds on the clock. Is he is the, on the clock? <laughs> <laughs> on the clock. The party's not even started yet. <laughs> and he's ahead of his brother. If Maxim Tomilov climbs past the high point of Alexei Tomilov, then he will knock him out. He'll knock his own brother off the podium place well you know i think it happens uh, it happens quite regularly and, with those forth, two yeah <laughs> <laughs> they have been such a dominant family in the sport for such a long time they really have yeah really strong in that undercut on the left hand kicks in high places the stein with the right didn't quite get it first time there it is i think in the men's um category this year as well there are a few of the big names missing um, people who have taken a year out like young he young yeah he's um, decided to take a break from the competitions this year 
Uh, well, I mean, he won everything well, last year. Well, you know, and he's he's been at the top for so long. And he is 60 now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, he's not quite that old. <laughs> he is not. Um, so 35 he is. Yeah, but... Um, so he deserves a bit of a rest. What this is year. interesting is in those years that Maxime Tomilov won, 2012, 14, 15, and 16, the alternating years, 11, 13, 17, it was Sean Park that won. Yeah. Those two have been battling it out at the top they have. for a good long time. Maxim Tomilov not missing that clip, coming down onto the ice barrel. This is the final athlete of this lead finals here in Sazfe, the first round of the 2018 UIAA Ice Climbing World Cup. Looking so strong. Kicking into the ice barrel, needs to move across round the other side to clip number seven. So places that figure four over the left hand. Into the fig nine. Now let's see how he does this move. That tall frame, I think, is going to set him well here. Yeah, I think so. I think it'll, it won't be a problem for him. Come on, Maxim. Looking super composed with six minutes and 40 seconds on the clock. Let's see where he's at with the pace compared to the rest of the athletes. Second behind Mohamed Reza, I'll try that again. Mohamed Reza Safdarian, 10 seconds behind him. Mohamed Reza Safdarian currently sitting in second place behind Russian climber Alexei Dengin. Go on, Maxim. Big swing, hits it, oh, oh pops, holds it on the left hand, good composure. Shows out how um, slight that hold is. So bad. But I'm sure he won't waste much time going for it again. Oh, look at that hip swing, really nice, but it's not working because the barrel's pushing away. Yeah, I think it's... Mm. There we go. Come on, Maxim. Five minutes and 39 seconds on the clock now. Moves onto that very bad hold below clip number eight. Kicks in with the left foot, sets himself to make that clip. Yeah, he did that move quite easily. Five minutes, 18 seconds on the clock for our final athlete, and he's now in first place in time. He's ahead of Dengin, he's ahead of Safdarian, and he's ahead of his brother. Maxim, the younger of the two. Strong with that left hand. He finished third here last year, won the competition the year before and the year before that. Yes. I'm curious to see if he smashes it again. Well, he's more than capable of doing it. Um, he knows Sasfe, he knows Sasfe style. He's very familiar with um, the, well, this bridge is slightly different, but. Certainly with the, the kind of theme of the climbing, the barrels, the logs, yeah. the steep headwall. The length of the roots. His teammate Dengen will be cheering him on, no doubt about it. Yeah. I wonder if Maxim Tomilov likes to climb to Tom Jones. <laughs> Earlier in the broadcast, if you missed it, we were talking about which song you would choose as your background music while climbing. Ema said she'd have Lord of the Dance. I did, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't. You still won't come up with an answer, though. Yeah. Kicks in with the feet and walks up that speed wall. Just lost a few seconds there towards clip. Oh no, that's his brother, the other Tommy Loff. <laughs> so many Tommy Loffs. No, he didn't lose any seconds. He's a second ahead of Alexi Dengin's time. One second, though, that's pretty close. Very close indeed. If he can keep this pace going, you can see his wife there in the background, Marian Filipova didn't qualify for the finals today, but yes. looks so strong. You know she is, and she always is every year. It's She's, incredible. Yeah. Um, and they've got two kids. Yeah. 
so and, composed. And you know what? Um, she's supposed to be like really involved in coaching the kids in Russia as well. Amazing. So. Look at that, using the knee to keep the rope out for the clip. Pro skills. Come on, Maxim. Reaches up into that ice barrel with the backhand. He's 14 seconds ahead of Alexi Dengin now. Doesn't need to stop to rest. You know, yeah, he's, he's still looking really strong. Just so fit. Yeah. Whoa, look at that drag, though. Makes clip number 15. Mohamed Reza had clip 16. Alexi Tomilov was between 16 and 17. Dengin was at the clip for 18, but didn't make it. So we're watching the action unfold now with two minutes and 14 seconds remaining. So again, he's going to opt for getting the next clip in. Davai, Maxim, come on. One forty-five on the clock. Time is ticking down. Just trying to get a bit of energy back to go for this move. If he gets it's this next clip, then he's going to be in tied with Dengen, I believe. Looks back to the crowd for support. Big swing with the Come left on. hand. Oh, misses it first time. Hits it second is, time. Is it? Is it? Is it I'm oh, he's sure. gone over again. Yeah, it didn't look that secure. Oh, he's tiring out now. The wall is so steep, he's almost horizontal. Generates that swing Come momentum. On. Hits it nice. with the left hand. Now we're talking. Come on, Maxim Tomilov. Left hand, he's got left still, leg. He's still got a minute left. Come on, Maxim. Into that fig nine again. Rolls up with the right hand to that terrible pebble. 43 seconds left, and as he's tiring out, he's got to be extra secure using that fig really four and fig nine on Whoa. the pebble. Whoa, he cuts loose altogether. Reaches up with the right hand. 30 seconds. 25 seconds. You can see he's so tired, he's just pushing on. I think Dengin might take this. 20 seconds left! Come on, Maxim Tomilov. 15 seconds remaining. Trying everything he's got just to get that rope through. There's so much drag. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. He makes oh, the clip, wow. but it's not enough. Alexei Dengin did hit the ice barrel, therefore will take the gold medal. Maxim Tomilov climbs his way into second place for silver medal, and it's wow. Mohamed Reza Safdarian with his first ever podium in bronze medal position. Ima, that was incredible. You know, it really was. Um, what an exciting final. Um, yeah, congratulations to all the climbers. It's just amazing to see everybody giving everything out there, and yeah, great results. So we're going to have the podiums in just a few moments' time. Let's have a quick look at that result in the women's as well. Third place will go to Maria Tolokanina. Second place will go to Wunchan Shin. First place will go to Hannah Rae Song. Let's see, one Russian, two Koreans in the women's, in the men's. Two Russians and an Iranian. Okay. Great nice. spread there. And let's take a look at that replay of Maxim Tomilov in action. Such a strong performance from Maxim Tomilov there.
moving across those ice barrels with ease. So, Ima, at this point, you're going to leave us. Okay, well, thank you very Checking much. you out. <laughs> hey, listen, thank you so much for joining me. Like I said, I definitely do not want to see you in this commentary <laughs> booth again for the rest of the season. But if it happens, then I'll very be delighted. I'll be very delighted to have you here. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thank you very much, Liam. Um, make sure you follow Ima on Instagram and all of that jazz. She'll be climbing throughout the rest of the season. There's a look at those results. I'm going to head down to the competition structure, see if I can grab a couple of the athletes and at the very least, get prepared for the podium. You guys stay tuned. We'll do our very best to be back with you in just a couple of seconds time.
So I've just been told that that actually concludes the broadcast for now. We're going to come back live again at 10 o'clock for the podiums. But I just want to say this. What an incredible finals. The first round of the competition setting the standard for the rest of the season here in Saz Bay. If you have just joined us, don't worry, you'll be able to catch all of the action on YouTube and Facebook as replays. Subscribe and like the UIAA Facebook and YouTube channels for more information on that. There's been upsets, there's been amazing emotion, there's been all sorts of action. Do check it out, do follow us on social media, and until 10 o'clock when we come back with the podiums, very good evening. My name's Liam Lonsdale. Thank you.